Welcome to another weekly UAS news update. And this is week 52. Next week, we're going to be celebrating one year. Whoop, whoop. This week, actually, a lot of really important news. And the first one is going to be remote ID that could possibly be coming in 2021. That's right around the corner. Uh, maybe not actually at the pace at which 2020 is going. Um, another question is, will DJI stop selling their drones? There is something going on this week that you may have taken a look. So we'll, we'll dig into that. Uh, we'll talk about somebody who got arrested for shooting a drone. This is not the first time and won't be the last time, I'm sure. And then I'm going to talk about an, uh, an FAA survey that is going to be upcoming that I think we should be paying attention to. And then lastly, I'll talk about the UAS symposium from the FAA that's going to be moving online. So let's get started. The first thing this week is remote ID. I know you guys love hearing about remote ID, especially this one, I think. Uh, the FA administrator, his name is Stephen Dixon, he's, um, he's been publicly actually pushing for the FAA to release remote ID by the end of 2020, the end of 2020. Uh, we just started this at the end of 2019, by the way, 2019, the very end, right before we hit 2020 uh, is when the FAA came up with this NPRM that uh, kept us uh, alive for a few months. Uh, but with over 53,000 comments, I really have no idea how they're going to read these comments and come up with a final ruling and, uh, and really make any sense of the comments. So I was um, trying to stay positive that the FA would actually read the comments and make changes based on this. We'll see. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to remain positive, but uh, if they're going to go and, and go live with this by the end of 2020, there is no way that they're going to read 53,000 comments and make sense of them. Um, there were documents that were leaked this week, and uh, that came from the cohort of eight companies. If you remember, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago, uh, that, uh, that cohort was uh, put together by the FAA to kind of provide not these standards, but to provide the technology, uh, how the technology is going to be implemented. And what came out of this is actually they're going to be, it looks like, again, this is just a leaked document, this is not final, it looks like they're going to be using some kind of technology that called DSS, DSS Discovery and Synchronization Service. Um, if you read it, I'm sure you probably didn't because this is a really intricate document, but the ASTM standard for remote ID that came up in uh, earlier this year talked about the system of discovery and synchronization service. The idea is basically that all the information would be sent to a USS, which is, we've talked about this before, where the data would be collected and then the qualified agencies would be pinging the USS to get that data. So there's more to it. There's more that's a lot more technical than my level of knowledge and proficiency at this stage. So if I can read more about it, I, I plan on reading actually the uh, ASTM standard. Uh, it's a it's a really technical document. So I don't always read. I don't always enjoy reading these kind of documents. But if I can find information, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, one thing that came out of this leaked document as well is that the FA it looks like they're going on a model of updating the data once every minute. Now. I thought about this for a while and once every minute is actually, well, it's not a whole lot if you think about it. And there's no way that they'll be able to provide any kind of meaningful data uh, with having the data pinged every once every minute. So uh, to me, it sounds like that they're maybe trying to go the easy route and trying to put something in place very quickly just so that they can put it in place. Uh, even though that may not be the best possible uh, uh, system out there. Um, if you think about what we had in the NPRM, which were, um, uh, which was the FA wanting to really know where you are at all time from a from a safety perspective. We had talked about uh, federal agencies that really wanted to know where you were uh, just to make sure that they could keep track of you in case you wanted to do bad stuff. Well, once every minute, I'm sorry, but this is going to provide you nothing. So uh, the uh, the document actually seems to say that the implementation would start in 2021. 2021. Uh, in the NPRM, they said that after final ruling, we would have three years to go live. So I don't know what this 2021 really means, uh, but this is this is really, really soon. So I'm going to put a link right here to an Aviation Today article uh, that, that I read that I get this information from so you can read it yourself. But um, there will be more. I'm sure there will be more leaks from these uh, meetings that are going on right now with the cohort. And, uh, and I'll keep you posted when I hear more information. The next thing that was in the news that was kind of big this week is DJI could potentially stop selling drones. Um, a little bit of background on this. There's been a, a, a war 
between Hotel and DJI for years now, since I think 2016, the last four years. And uh, basically it actually started with DJI going after Hotel and then they kind of uh, filed a suit against them in, in retaliation. Anyways, uh, it's been going on for a while, but this week it kind of took a turn. Uh, a judge at the, um, at the International Trade Commission decided in favor of Hotel and recommended, that's a key word right here, that the drones that are in this fight right here uh, stop being sold in the U.S., stop being imported and sold in the U.S. So this could mean that um, eventually DJI may not be able to sell the models that are in question right here. The battle, you may ask, what is it about? It's about a, a patent that is owned by Hotel about the folding legs, the folding legs on the drone. Actually, I have one right here. I was doing some uh, Mavic Air 2 uh, footage, which is coming out next week, by the way. Uh, the, this uh, folding leg mechanism right here is the, the thing that's in question. So if this happens, the battle is basically over uh, these drones that have all the stuff, which is your Mavic Pro, your Mavic Air, and your Spark series. And I think even the Mini, but I didn't see the Mini in the article that I read. Um, but if they win, then the import and the sale of these drones would be uh, forbidden in the U.S. Now the ruling is not final just yet. It still needs to be confirmed by the entire full commission, the ITC. And uh, but if it happens, they're saying that by July, you wouldn't be seeing this on the shelves anymore. Now, I'm not a betting man, but how many of you want to bet that nothing is going to happen and past July we will still see these folding DJI drones out there? I mean it. Okay, my prediction is that. A bunch of lawyers are going to get pretty rich from all of this and then there's going to be a large sum of money that's going to be exchanged between DJI and Hotel and then this is going to go away. So we'll see. I mean, it's been going on for four years, so uh, we'll see how hungry these lawyers are and then what they want to do with the information. The next thing I want to talk about is a man in Minnesota that was charged and arrested for shooting a drone that was flying over a meat processing facility. Uh, he was charged with uh, criminal damage to property and reckless discharge of a weapon within city limits. Uh, the pilot says that he was actually flying over uh, chickens that were being slaughtered by employees because they were contaminated with what's going on right now. And um, the, the, this is not new, by the way. There, there's been people shooting at drones for a long time, unfortunately, and this is not a, a problem that's going away. And especially with what we just talked about with the remote ID and the fact that uh, the information from the pilot still looks like it's going to be available to, uh, to the public, I can see that the next thing that we're going to see in the news is a pilot getting shot because he was flying his drone. So uh, I've mentioned this in my comment to the NPRM. I know I've been vocal about this. I think it's a terrible idea uh, to have remote ID information available to the public, especially for the location of the pilot. So uh, we'll see. I, I hope I don't have to report on this one day, but uh, my fear is that this is around the corner and it's going to happen. The next thing I want to talk about is an upcoming FAA survey. Now I'm going to be cynical for a second here. Uh, the FAA is going to go over 53,000 comments in uh, probably less than a year, but they have to request for approval to create a survey. And this is what I want to talk about. There is a, a little note that was put out there that the FAA is requesting comments, just like they did for the NPRM. Now, this is not an NPRM because there is no uh, notice of proposed rulemaking. Uh, but the FAA is asking for comments on whether or not they should create a survey for drone operators. Um, as part of the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018, the FAA needs to collect info, well, needs to create a UTM, a UAS traffic management system. And as such, they need to find information about pilots and how they fly. So the FAA is proposing to create a survey and that survey would collect data so they can get better information to create this UTM, which I think is a great idea. Um, I think it's a little funny that the FAA has to ask for permission to create a survey, but uh, that kind of tells you a little bit about how governments work. This is not just the U.S., governments in general. Uh, the survey in itself would contain six questions about general behavior of the pilot. There would be four questions about the number of UAS that you have and the type of UAS that you have. And then if you're a commercial operator, there's five additional questions. And if you're a public safety uh, operator, then it's going to be seven additional questions in there. Uh, so you can go on the FAA website or you can go on the regulations.gov website. There's only one comment when I checked today. Uh, so if you want to not, not leave that person with only a single comment, then you can go and tell the FAA whether or not creating a survey is a good idea. 
Uh, in all seriousness though, uh, this would actually be sent to people that have registered their drones. So uh, I read actually the comment that was on here and I thought the comment was, uh, was interesting. It had a lot of good points and they were saying that this would only capture data from people that have registered their drones, which means that anyone with a small drone sub 250 grams would not receive this survey. And also people that have not registered their drones, which they're still flying in the airspace, right? Uh, this would also not go to them. So uh, again, you can go ahead and leave a comment, tell me how you think about this survey, and then when it comes up, I'll be sure to let you know so you can fill it out, because I think it is important that we tell the FAA that we're out there and we're flying and how we are flying uh, so that they can actually, hopefully, serve us. The last thing that I want to talk about today is the uh, FAA UAS symposium that was supposed to happen in person is going to be moved online. Uh, the um, <laughs> The, the person in charge of this must have been a Star Wars fan because they created episodes. Now, there's going to be two episodes. Uh, there's going to be uh, episode one, which is going to be July 8 to July 9. And then episode two is going to be August 18 to August 19. And, uh, and I checked, Jar Jar Bing is not one of the speakers. So you're, you're safe on that side. Um, I thought the price was a little steep for something that's going to be online. Uh, if you want to do a single episode uh, for only one day, these are two day uh, events. Uh, it's going to be $150. If you want to do two days, then it's going to be $249. And if you want to do all of the episodes, both days, so four days total, that's going to be $375. And no, the popcorn is not included in that fee, unfortunately. So, uh, But uh, again, I think it's a little steep for something that's going to be online, especially when it can be something that's, uh, that's going to be very informative for a lot of people and a lot of people that otherwise can't travel. Uh, may not be able to do it because they just can't afford this uh, this kind of fee. So um, I wish the FA would have done something a little bit cheaper, a little bit more uh, affordable for people and uh, and maybe have it so that if you're just an operator and you're not really in the industry, then you can attend for, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. But um, anyways, uh, I'm still considering paying the fee, quite frankly. I don't know if it's going to be worth it or not. Uh, it is a lot of money. So I'll keep you posted if I decide to do it and kind of give you a brief of what is going on in here. This is all I have for this week. Uh, I'm excited. Mark is, I mentioned Mark last week. Some of you said that Mark should introduce himself. We will do that, I promise. Uh, when I released the information last week, uh, Mark had just told me yes the day before. So we haven't had a chance to really get in front of the camera, but I do want to get uh, an introduction from Mark so you know who he is. If you are a student in the course, you will be interacting with Mark as our student services person, a manager, and, um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about this. So Mark starts training next week and, uh, and you will hear more from him uh, if you interact with us. And uh, this is it really, this is all I have for this week. As always, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done that yet, you'll get a little notification. Um, if you pass your exam, by the way, congratulations. And uh, I know testing centers are starting to reopen, which is good. Uh, and uh, more and more of our students are, are starting to pass the exam again after a long break. So uh, that's all I have. I will see you guys next week and uh, happy flying.